Do you love art? What about abstract art or surreal art? What about pet portraiture? Today, art has gone to the dogs, and we want you to meet artist Katie Helen Stockinger. Now, she's originally from Minnesota, but this Midwestern girl now calls Southern California her home. Katie spends a lot of her time at the dog parks, and that's where she uses her paints and her talents to capture the dogs she meets and place them creatively onto her canvas. Watch this. I come here to work on pet portraits and to be around would-be models. Other dogs that are here to play and have fun really help me get inspired to bring some of that life into my canvas. A father ordered that for his daughter's 16th birthday. That's like her favorite little pet and she's already getting nervous about leaving for college and leaving him behind. Uh, this one I have to do the background on yet and finish up his body and add a little bow tie. Anyone who's had a dog can tell you that they have absolutely got expressions. They have absolutely got moods. And by getting to experience that, to see the excitement on their faces when they're coming to the dog park, you really learn sort of the ins and outs of how their faces move and how they communicate their different expressions. This is gonna be a great size for him because his ears come all the way up. And then if you were to outline him, he's sort of a rectangle shape. If he was in a square, then I'd have to chop off his ears to get him to fit on the canvas. You know, in fourth grade, I got Artist of the Month, and then I was um, voted most artistic and most creative in high school, and everybody said, are you gonna go to art school? Are you gonna pursue art as a career? And I said, no, because I'll never make a living at art. And then now, of course, here I am 10 years later, and it's my full-time job. I really believe that no matter what, um, you come full circle to what you really love and what you really meant to do. When I paint in public, a lot of people say, oh, aren't you nervous? Or aren't you concerned that people will come up and distract you? And I always say, absolutely not. You know, when I'm here and I'm painting and people are stopping by, I want to give them something to look at. If I'm at home, there's, you know, the kitchen upstairs, there's snack time, there's nap time, there's all these different things. If I'm here, I'm here to work and I'll get a lot more done and my mood will be a lot better and so will my focus throughout the entire time. I was at a farmer's market and I was selling some of my artwork, or not selling some of my artwork, and I was brainstorming ideas to come up with um, Christmas gifts that would be original art that people would want to purchase as a holiday gift item. And as I'm sitting there at the farmer's market thinking about it, I see dogs being walked on leashes and in strollers and wearing little jackets and being put on people's shoulders. And I'm like, that is it. People love their pets. And what better gift idea for the holidays than a custom pet painting of your furry little friend? The first market that I ever did was the Ocean Beach Farmer's Market. And when I moved out of that neighborhood into Little Italy, I got into that farmer's market. And that community was so absolutely overwhelmingly welcoming and supportive of what I was doing. And from there, I got so much word of mouth business and referrals and new customers coming from people in my area. And then I would notice a little burst of business coming from New Jersey or Montana or Texas or all around the country and what I realized was people come to San Diego on vacation they go to the farmers market they come in on the cruise ships and they're taking my cards home with them and passing them out to their friends and I'm starting to establish more of a web presence and an e-commerce business really as opposed to just being only at the farmers markets and only at dog parks and things like that last year 70% of my sales were online. Oftentimes I'm working with a customer who may be on the other side of the country and all I have is a photograph and whatever words the customer provides about their pet. To be honest, people make the assumption because I paint pets for a living that I'm a dog person. In reality, I've never had a dog of my own. I'm a cat person, so I'm, I wasn't that accustomed to the way the dogs interact and how they look and what sort of some of their little idiosyncrasies are. So. As I come here, I learn more and more about the different breeds and about the personality traits that come with them. And it's really helped me develop as an artist. It's sort of, you know, you're studying your model. It helps that it's a beautiful setting and that I make new friends and that I drum up new business. But really, I'm also doing a character study on a potential model. I had a woman who contacted me because she's getting married. And so for her save the dates, she wanted me to paint her two cats as bride and groom. So I got to put the cat the boy cat in a little tuxedo and a little fancy top hat, and then I got to paint the girl cat in a little veil and a beautiful dress. I don't discriminate, I'll paint any pet. I've done, um, of course, many cats. I've done a bearded dragon, a llama, a bunny, a couple of birds, and also recently I got a commission for a fish and an iguana. I'll 
I'll paint whatever people like. I don't discriminate. I've learned to not try and force it. I have to paint what I like and I have to paint what I'm good at and that is animals of all kinds, but definitely no humans. I'm grateful every single day that I get to do what I do for work, uh, not only because it allows me the freedom to be able to come to beautiful places like this and meet new people every day, I'm really meeting the best side of people. They're talking about pets that they love or that they have loved in the past, or they're ordering a gift for somebody who's important in their life, and it is just so tremendously rewarding. Every email that I get saying, my God, you should have seen the person who received this. They were speechless, they were crying, they fell to the floor, and it's just, there's no, there's no better reward than hearing that you've touched somebody like that. It's such a beautiful and true form of work for me to use my hands to create something that then travels across the country and lands in someone's home and hangs on their wall. That's so cool that I'm, I'm sharing what I do in people's homes every day. In the last five years, pet portraiture has been gaining in popularity. Hey, even people who don't have dogs buy these paintings. Up after the break, don't miss the segment on SNAP, the spay-neuter action project. They are dedicated to improving the lives of our dogs and our cats.